Now that we've demonstrated where the outer canthus is and where the eye is, and we've made our mask, we're going to make our mask. All the stuff in the previous video was to ballpark the patient and make sure that you have the eye inferior to any of your potential treatment fields when you're ballparked before you make the mask because it's difficult to retilt the head after a mask is already made. So, leave the BB on, leave the patient in place, make your mask. Once you've made your mask, you're going to start the simulation in earnest. You, at, while the mask is drying, we're going to go ahead and rotate the gantry over the lateral. I'm not going to demonstrate that. I just want you to see that we're going to rotate the lateral. Our same 6x6 six six field size is going to be set. We're going to go fluoro. Once we fluoro, and it looks like everything is good, and we still demonstrate that the eye is out of the treatment field, we'll call the doctor. The doctor is going to then look at the floor of themselves. Once the physician has decided that everything is cool, you're going to come back in the room, and you're going to mark your CR. The gantry is still on your lateral. Okay? The next thing you want to do is rotate, rotate up to the anterior. We've got in, out, and up, down, set. Our third dimension is left, right. You cannot see left, right by looking at your patient this way. So now we need to basically set the depth from the lateral by looking at the AP. So rotate the gantry up to the AP, go back out of the room and floral again. Do not move the patient up, down, or in, out. If you do that, you have to start completely over. You've already got up, down, and in, out set. Those are hard set. You have already notated the part that I skipped. Once the doctor fluoros and he likes everything, notate everything. Collimator, gantry, field size, and table. Once you've got those table settings set, leave the lateral table setting off because you still don't know what it is. You could have ballparked the patient like that or forgot and not moved it left right correctly. That lateral is going to change once the doctor looks at fluoro from the anterior. Let's pretend that you forgot to move it left right when you were messing around with this um, lateral canthus BB. So you rotate to the anterior, you go out and you floral, and you're like, why are we looking at him above the eye? We need to be right in the center. So you're going to actually, on floral, move the patient laterally until you're centered. And then you're going to call the doctor. The doctor's going to come in and move it three millimeters. Now the doctor likes it. Your lateral has changed, but your in out and your up down has not. Now that the doctor has okayed this anterior field radiographically, still demonstrating that the outer canthus is inferior to the inferior aspect of your field size, you now have X, Y, and Z set. You can now come in, you can notate everything cantry, field size, collimator, table settings, all of your table settings including your lateral from your lateral <laughs> your lateral table setting from your lateral gantry angle. Come in, mark this anterior, and while you're at it, mark this other side while the gantry and the image intensifier is out of the way. So now you've got a three-point setup. You've got a three-point setup. You're going to start taking films. Take a film from the anterior go get it approved. Just as always, you're going to set your image intensifier, center it, set your TFD, set your film marker. Get the film approved. Once the film is approved, you're going to go ahead and go to the lateral, take that film, and get it approved. Once it's approved, rotate back around, take that film, and you can get it approved later. All the while, you need to remember at some point, you could either do this at the end, or do it while you're taking films. This is an isocentric setup that the doctor has set radiographically. You now need to know what these SSDs are. So every time you move to a different gantry position, you need to look at and notate what SSD you're setting in space from each angle and notate that as well. So make sure that you get your SSDs. That is for a set up with a straight gantry anterior field. The second way you can do it, with, do it is with a vertex. Let's explore what a vertex one might look like. I am going to actually move 
the tilted headrest out of the way. And we're going to go with a relatively neutral headrest. You're going to repeat most of the same things. You're still going to put the outer canthus BB on, but we're not checking for head tilt because we're going to use the gantry to achieve a vertex to go up underneath the eyes. But we still need to know where they are. So you still need to have an outer canthus BB. You are still going to start with a lateral. So have the patient in a relatively neutral position. You may have a little bit of head tilt to help you out. A little bit of head tilt would help. It's just not as extreme as the other head tilt we were talking about. Go ahead and set the patient up to where you are ballparked just as before. You want to go about two and a half centimeters anterior and two and a half centimeters superior to the EAM. And you can see if the EAM is here and we've got two finger widths to there and two finger widths to there and you drop her a little bit. Basically right in the middle of the temple just to mold the zygomatic arch. Now you can see that if we have her ball parts correctly, an anterior is not going to work. But we can still use the same kind of field size and methods from the lateral. So have the field set of the lateral, ballpark it left to right to where you're right in the middle of her head, have your BB set, set your field size, and once you're on the lateral, go out and fluoro. Once you fluoro and you like it, call the doctor. The doctor's going to come in and fluoro as well. Once the physician likes it, notate everything except for your table angle and your table lateral because we still only know in, out, and up, down. We still don't know if we're set left right properly because we can't see that from this direction. We can see X, we can see Y, but we can't see the Z, which, uh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We can see the Z and we can see the X, but we can't see the Y. So now that we've got that, you're going to come in, you're going to mark your patient, rotate up a little bit and mark the other lateral as well. Rotate to an anterior and then we're going to do this. We're going to get a little crazy when we tilt the table around to 90 degrees off the center. I've got my table at 270. What we're now going to do is rotate the gantry in this plane, which is a vertex. When you have the table turn 90 degrees off the of center and you rotate through this plane, through the sagittal plane of the patient, that is a vertex field. Anything that shoots down through the sagittal plane of the patient from the anterior or even the posterior, that's the vertex. Anything that shoots in this manner. Now, when you do that, you have to be very careful. Image intensifier problems, once again. You can rotate the gantry only so far until the II is going to crash into the table. So what you have to do, I can see right now that my inferior field edge is cutting right through the eyes. This is not enough gantry. So what we have to do is move the image intensifier. The first thing I'm going to move is do is move it laterally and I'm going to move the TFD way out. Now we've got a lot more clearance. Now we can move the gantry some more. We're going to continue doing this but watching very closely so you don't ruin the equipment and looking at the actual field size because you can actually see that BB. Now I can see, unfortunately the BB's on the wrong side. Let me move it over here so we can see it. That's the outer canthus. You can see the field edge is going to be such that we're going to be fine. I'm actually going to move the table laterally so we can look and see. Let me block some of the light. There's 
actually see that. So as you can see, our BB is inferior to the inferior aspect of the field size. That demonstrates that even with divergence, we are not going to treat that eye. We're not going to treat that lens. So I'm going to move back left, right to my original ballpark position. And then we're going to go fluoro. And on fluoro, we're going to be able to demonstrate radiographically that that BB is out of the field size, that it is inferior to the most inferior aspect of that radiation beam. So we're achieving basically the same thing. When the head was tilted up, we just treated straight down through it. Now the head is neutral, we're going to angle the gantry into the vertex and go up under the eyes while still treating that pituitary area. So you're going to walk out of the room, you're going to fluoro. Once you like the fluoro, call the doctor. Once the doctor comes in and fluoros and he likes everything, make sure that the doctor doesn't actually start rotating the gantry at full blast because he's going to crash the equipment. Make sure he knows this is as far as I can go. And if you want to move it more, we have to go inside the room, rotate the gantry manually, and don't do it remotely while looking to make sure that you're clear. If need be, move the image intensifier some more. So the physician likes the fluoro. This is one time that we're going to put a film in, and we're not going to image. We're not going to center the image intensifier. If we did that, we'd crash it right into the table. And we're not going to set the same TFD. We better make sure that we have notated what TFD we are away from the, 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 the CR of the machine, away from isocenter. And you want to make sure when you take that film, you should have looked at it on fluoro to make sure that this is actually going to fit on the x-ray. Either way, you're still going to put a film marker. So this is one time that you're not going to set the TFD and you're not going to center the image intensifier. So take this film, get it approved. Once this film is approved, you are going to then kick your table back around and move your gantry back. I'm going to move my gantry first so I don't hurt anyone or anything. And I'm going to move the table back to zero. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, once you get the table back to zero, I would put mark the CR on the patient with the gantry in an upright position. We're going to actually set a BSP in the middle of her forehead, even though that's not where we're going to treat the vertex. You want a good three-point setup that's easily identifiable but not necessarily right where you're going to treat the VSP, okay? By definition, a VSP is a vertical, gantry to vertical position, set up point that is not necessarily treated. You could have also marked the vertex, but you don't want to confuse your left right in out that corresponds with the patient in this position with an in out left right vertex. I would just leave that off or mark it in a different color, or mark it in a different way with a dot or a circle or something like that. Either way, we now have a three-point setup in the same plane. We've only taken one film. Now we need to rotate over to the lateral, center the image intensifier and set your, vert, your, your, your TFD. I would recommend leaving the TFD where it is so that all three films are the same TFD. Take that film, get it approved. Once that film is approved, rotate over, take the other film, get it approved. Just like before, and I forgot to tell you this, and I would be kicking myself right now, you should have gotten an SSD up here with the table kicked in the, in, in the gantry in the vertex position. We need that SSD and both lateral SSDs. You're also going to need this SSD as well where the table is here at your BSP. Dosimetry is going to need all of those distances. At the very end of either one of these simulations, you're probably also going to take a separation so that 
dosimetry not only knows what SSD we end up at with, but we know what width we're dealing with in the first place. Now that we've done all that, we finally completed two different types of pituitary simulations.